Hello, uh, welcome to another episode of Lewis Gets Stressed in the Kitchen Trying New Things. So, I don't know if you've seen online um, that recently there's been a trend of people making some pretty strange things out of bananas. Um, and so, I thought, since I was so good at uh, making something new in my last cooking video, why, why would I not give it a go? Um, so, bananas are an amazing thing. Uh, they're full of potassium and fibre and they're delicious. Um, I've seen a couple recipes of how to change uh, the skins of these delightful fruits into uh, bacon and pulled pork. So I'm going to give this a go. Um, the first step is to watch me eat more bananas in one go. Never ever eaten in my entire life. So whilst bananas are delicious, I've had two and I already feel myself getting full. So I'm gonna uh, cut up the rest. I'm gonna put them in the fridge and eat them tomorrow because I ate dinner before this and was that a good idea? No. Did that stop me? Also no. Should it have stopped me? Yes. I'm gonna put these bananas aside, probably gonna need them later. So with the remaining banana skins, uh, just cut off, cut off the little nib bits and uh, we'll give them a wash. Also, please cut off the knuckles, you're not going to be eating banana knuckles. That's barbaric. Once you've washed the banana skins, uh, make sure you scoop out the insides of them with a spoon. Now, I remember watching a Bite Size Vegan video saying that people, well, some people eat the insides of banana peels and it doesn't look all that appealing to me, to be honest. Initially, that wasn't awful. But, ugh, ugh, but it tasted way too much like skin after that. I'm not sure how hard to peel it, to be honest. Like how much of the stringy white stuff to get off. Because as I'm pulling it, the banana skin is just falling apart. Blah. I need to rinse my mouth because that tastes awful. A little banana fact for you guys. Even though they look nothing like berries, bananas actually um, are classed as berries. And I would love to tell you why, but I don't know. Something to do with the seeds, I think? Another banana fact, I know a lot about bananas. I don't really. Um, but the reason that banana flavoured things don't taste like bananas to us um, is because they are flavoured after another kind of banana. Back a few, it was a few decades ago, I think it was the 60s or 70s, there was some sort of disease that uh, bananas were particularly success, susceptible to um, because they're all genetically identical. Bananas don't have seeds that you can plant in them. Um, so, they are all genetically identical because you just get uh, a cutting from a banana tree and then plant that. And so, um, this one disease used to wipe out uh, the bananas that we used to have, and those bananas were called growing shells. Um, now, we have a new kind of banana. A new kind of banana came on the scene uh, because it was not genetically identical to the Roma shells, though they are genetically identical to each other. Those kind of bananas are called a Cavendish banana. And this kind of banana, and likely every kind of banana you've ever eaten, is a Cavendish. Um, and so, that is why banana flavoured things do not taste like bananas, because they are flavoured after the Roma shell, whilst the taste that we identify bananas with um, is the taste of a Cavendish banana. The more you know. 
all you know. This episode is brought to you by the big banana industry. It's not, but if any banana companies want to jump in my pocket, I wouldn't say no. How do they look? They're looking like bacon rashers yet? Because they're not to me. Actually, no, I kind of see it. If you think of like American crispy bacon. Don't don't worry though. This isn't this isn't how we're actually gonna eat them. Yet. The uh, the next step that the recipe calls for is to heat a quarter cup of vegetable oil in a pan. However, as you might remember from the last episode, I don't know what a cup is. So I just eyeballed it. I don't even normally cook with oil, to be honest. I, uh, I normally use water. But I've, uh, I went out and bought that especially for today, as well as a few other things, which you might see later. In the meantime, it says to mix the says to mix some soy, a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke, a quarter teaspoon of paprika into a large mixing bowl. That doesn't sound like it needs a large mixing bowl. But who am I other than a lowly vegan who doesn't know how to cook? Unlike the last episode, um, I am using a recipe that explicitly states teaspoon. So I don't need to be stressed out about what TSP means. Get in there. You sure just want? This ain't a lot of a certain I'm an idiot. Right. <laughs> I hate myself. It said one tablespoon, but I don't really know how much that is, so I'm just gonna put in three teaspoons. Um, because I'd already put in one, and by that point it was too late. Now the recipe said brown sugar. However, besides my sweet ass, I ain't got any brown sugar. Um, so, I'm gonna use one teaspoon, tablespoon of granulated white sugar. I feel like it's a very American recipe, and it's gonna be like American style bacon. And I never tried that, to be honest, so, does it really matter? Does it really matter? I suspect not. Now, whilst I don't have garlic powder, I feel like no one's really an authority on this, so I'm gonna sway a little bit. I'm going to use some of my Caribbean onion and garlic uh, powder. So, I've seen a ton of recipes that required liquid smoke, and I was always like, ugh, don't own liquid smoke, what even is it? But today, I went to Tesco, and I found myself some gosh darn liquid smoke. I've literally never seen it before. Um, it was in the American section, which again, would explain why I've never seen it. It doesn't really smell of anything. That's because, <laughs> that's because there was a seal on the lid. Oh, what? Oh, that was wild. That was wild. Um, liquid smoke, quarter teaspoon. Sweet paprika, some sweet paprika. I don't have any sweet paprika, I have a regular paprika, so I'm just gonna dash all that. Uh, mix this bad boy up. It did ask for some syrup, but I don't have any. Um, Cause, don't, don't want it, don't want it. I'm gonna put the same amount of water in there. One tablespoon, just to fill it out a bit. I'd forgotten how hard it was to, uh, put water from the tap onto a spoon. Really didn't have to use a large mixing bowl for this, to be honest, I could have done this in a little cup. And it's for reasons like that, that I feel like there's no authority on banana bacon. So I don't feel so bad about not sticking too strictly to the recipe. So I think that's about done. I'm going to put the banana skins in the pan behind me. I'm gonna take you over so you can have a closer look. This has every potential to be a disaster. But let's hope that it's not. So it says to add them and keep 
frying until they are slightly past golden brown. Okay, so I fried them, uh, they're all crispy, and I'm put, I've put them on a paper towel rack. Um, so the next step is to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, thanks to the miracle of Google, 190 degrees Celsius, in a measurement that makes sense to me. Um, so I'm gonna take the, uh, the peels, the pre-bacon, um, and mix them into this solution. I'm a little skeptical, to be honest. Maybe it's because I still see them as banana skin. All right, so yeah, mix is applied. Now it looks better. Now I'm not grossed out by it. I've got high hopes at this point. It looks pretty good. Um, well, it looks like it could be pretty good. <laughs> it looks like it could either be delicious or horrific. I'm gonna slap this in the oven for five minutes and hope for the best. What time is it? So minutes past eight. I'll look at them. Yeah. 12 past minutes. I left the room for a second, um, came back at 12 past, and they're a little burnt, to be honest. So, might have gone awfully. Might still taste okay. I'm gonna give it a go. And uh, we'll see in real time what I think. So I'm gonna have mine on, okay, so in Nottingham, where I'm from, we call these cops, um, because they look like cobblestones. But no matter what I call them, somewhere, somebody in the UK is gonna lose their minds. Um, so I'm gonna call it a bun. I'm gonna try to call it a bun, it might slip into cop. Um, but you know, can we, can we agree not to argue on this? It's very silly, they're all the same thing. Okay, so about to see real time. This is really dry, but I want to taste it. If it's still bad, I'll put some ketchup on it. If it's still bad after that, I'll try again. Oh. I've definitely burnt all the flavor out of it. <laughs> I'm basically eating a charcoal sandwich. So, you know, that was a me problem, that was not a recipe problem. I'm not gonna waste the bread, I'm gonna throw these, I'm gonna try again. Right, okay, so I've tried again, um, and it seems to have not burned terrifically. Let's give it another go, let's give it another go. I'm hoping this time there's better. Weird. It's weird. Um, it's quite sweet, but I think that's American style bacon. Um, I put in some barbecue sauce to help with the flavour. It's all right. It's all right. My honest opinion, I wouldn't make it to uh, to impress a non-vegan. I'm gonna be like, hey, this is something you can do. But you know what? By itself, it's not bad. I feel like if I had this on a if I had this on a sandwich with some like, lettuce and some tomato, you could make an all right BLT. Not bad. I'm going to rate this solid 2.5 out of uh, 5. Not amazing. Not bad. Very okay. It's very okay. Would I, would I replace uh, bacon with this? No. However, there's other vegan bacons which do better than this. However, if you've got some bananas, you've got some nannies knocking about, why not? Why not, eh? But it's okay, because I'm gonna finish this, but I've got another recipe coming up. 